Okay, once again, the point of the whole cardiovascular system is blood flow, our friend here. And one of the major determinants of blood flow is pressure. And so now what I want to do is back up and look at pressure in big picture and talk about the major ways to regulate um, pressure. And it's really going to be consistent. It's really always going to be you regulate pressure by the pump, the tubes, like vasoconstriction, vasodilation, and then the volume. So pump, tubes, fluid, pump, tubes, fluid, pump, tubes, fluid. Okay, so um, we already talked quite a bit about the pump, um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more about um, ways that you decide whether to turn up or down the autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system. So let's go back to that just a little bit. Okay, so extrinsic control of blood pressure. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to talk about how other body systems can control the blood pressure. Nervous system, endocrine system, and also kidneys can control blood pressure because the three ways to really impact blood pressure are pump, tubes, volume, pump, tubes, volume. Okay, so um, autonomic nervous system can control the blood pressure. We already know that, and it does it a couple of ways. It does it by controlling the heart rate, but also remember that you can control the stroke volume because you can impact ventricular contractility with the sympathetic nervous system. You can increase the strength of contraction, not just the rate of contraction. So that's good. Um, so the autonomic nervous system um, is like short-term regulation of blood pressure control. But what are some other reasons besides tigers and exercise that I could decide to change what the autonomic nervous system is doing. Um, I can change it because of the chemistry of the blood and I can change it because of the pressure of the blood. So let's look at those. The first one are gonna be called baroreceptor reflexes. So what happens with baroreceptor reflexes is that you are assessing the pressure in a few places. If I can get this to move over. You are assessing the pressure in a few places to figure out whether you need to do anything to the blood pressure because of the pre blood pressure that's existing. So the first ones we're gonna look at are called the arterial baroreceptor reflexes. And so what's happening here is you are going to be assessing the pressure in the arteries in primarily two places, the aortic arch and then the carotid sinus. Um, so the carotid sinus is the sort of big area right where the internal and the external carotid arteries will bifurcate or split. Now, um, the reason the carotid sinus is going to be really important is because whatever happens here is going to happen to the internal carotid arteries, which deliver collectively, the two of them, 75% of the blood supply to the brain-ish. And of course, the um, pressure in the aortic arch is really going to determine sort of like all of systemic arterial pressure because like what happens there will happen to the systemic flow. So those are going to be two really, really important places to assess and regulate pressure. So these are called baroreceptors, as in barometric pressure, as in pressure. And um, what is happening is in the walls of the aortic arch and the carotid sinus, you are going to be detecting stretch. And when you detect stretch, you are going to send impulses to the medulla oblongata. And depending on the, whether the stretch was high or low, that is going to determine whether the medulla oblongata activates the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system. So the initiation of nervous system control of blood pressure, you get sensory input from the baroreceptors and it goes to the medulla oblongata. And then the medulla oblongata will say high pressure, what do I do? Low pressure, what do I do? And so the medulla oblongata will activate blood pressure changes by activating the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system to control cardiac output, right? Um, heart rate and stroke volume. And it's going to do something consistent to systemic vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Okay, so let's watch a video of baroreceptor reflexes. Ready? Increased blood pressure stretches the carotid arteries and aorta, causing the baroreceptors to increase their basal rate of action potential generation, 
Action potentials are conducted by the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves to the cardioregulatory and vasomotor centers in the medulla oblongata. Okay. As a result... That was the sensory part. I don't care if you know the two nerves involved in the sensory part. So sensory input, stretch, high stretch in the aortic arch, and that's not the carotid sinus, but that's what I was trying to make it. Aortic arch and carotid sinus send sensory input to the medulla oblongata. And then how is the medulla oblongata going to respond if this was high pressure? So I want you to think about it. If this was high pressure detected in the aortic arch and the medulla oblongata, oh, sorry, in the aortic arch and the carotid sinus, send that sensory input. And then the medulla oblongata has to decide whether to turn up the sympathetic nervous system or up the parasympathetic nervous system. So try to predict for a minute, because this is just based on negative feedback, maintaining homeostasis. So let's see what happens. Result of increased stimulation from the baroreceptors, the cardioregulatory center increases parasympathetic stimulation to the heart, which decreases the heart rate. Also, as a- Okay, so- High pressure decided to turn up the parasympathetic nervous system, which decreased heart rate. Doesn't have any impact on strength of contraction because the parasympathetic isn't hooked up to the um, wall of the ventricle. But now what am I going to do with the sympathetic nervous system? And then what am I going to do with the vessels that is consistent? As a result of the increased stimulation from the baroreceptors, the cardiovascular center decreases sympathetic stimulation to the heart, which decreases heart rate and stroke volume. Okay, decreased sympathetic stimulation, which decreased heart rate and stroke volume because of the wall of the ventricle, even though it's not showing there. Now, what can I do with the vessels that would be consistent? So my pressure was high here, yeah? And so what I did when the pressure was high here and here is I sent that to the medulla oblongata and the medulla oblongata said less sympathetic, more parasympathetic, which dropped cardiac output and therefore dropped pressure. What can I do to the vessels that would be consistent systemically? Should I constrict or dilate? I should, let's see. Volume. The vasomotor center decreases sympathetic stimulation to blood vessels, causing vasodilation. The vasodilation, along with the decreased heart rate and decreased stroke volume, bring the elevated blood pressure back toward normal. If the initial problem were a decrease in blood pressure, the activities and effects of the baroreceptors, cardiovascular center, and vasomotor center would be the opposite of what is illustrated. Okay, so let's go to your notes. Okay, so arterial baroreceptor reflexes. The carotid sinus, this is a negative feedback thing. So what the carotid sinus does right here is um, it's controlling blood pressure to the brain. So FYI, these two really do the same thing. This one is just a little more pissy about body position. And it's also a little more likely to turn on and off because there's really not much... Um, pressure change to the brain that can be okay. You've got a rigid cranium, so you can't get too much pressure. You're intolerant of ischemia, so you can't get too little pressure. So this one is easier to piss off than this one, but they do the same thing, really. Okay, so this um, arterial, uh, the carotid sinus baroreceptor reflex control blood pressure in the brain. Internal carotid arteries supply most of the blood pressure to the brain. The rest is through the vertebral arteries. The baroreceptors are in the wall of the carotid sinus um, the increase in blood pressure stretches the sinus walls, and then the baroreceptors send a sensory input to the medulla oblongata, and then the medulla oblongata um, initiates more parasympathetic stimulation and inhibits sympathetic stimulation. Because the SA node and the AV node decreases heart rate, decreases strength of contraction because of the decrease in sympathetic stimulation, and therefore decreases cardiac output and decreases blood pressure in the arteries because of all of that. But it also will do what is consistent to the vessels, which is decreases sympathetic stimulation, which allows for um, vasodilation. The opposite is also true, though. If you detected low pressure here, right, you would do the opposite. You would turn up the sympathetic nervous system, down the parasympathetic nervous system, and cause systemic what? Vasoconstriction or vasodilation if the pressure was low here. You would cause systemic 
vasoconstriction to bump up the pressure because this is regulating it for the whole system. Okay, so what about this one? The aortic arch baroreceptor reflex pretty much does the same thing. Not as pissy about body position, um, gives you a little bit more leeway. These two, two could be turning on at the same time if your blood pressure was really low and you just didn't get up too fast. So it maintains normal systemic blood pressure um, the baroreceptors are in the wall of the aortic arch, and it's really similar to the carotid sinus reflex. It's just not as um, particular. Okay, there is a great interactive activity here, too. Factors affecting blood pressure. Right here, blood pressure terminology, cardiac output. All of these are great. Um, control of vessel diameter. All of that is really good for you guys to practice with. Okay, um, now... The one that is very different, so let's go back to our, okay. So the arterial baroreceptor reflexes, aortic arch and carotid sinus, those are the baroreceptor reflexes. They decide or help your uh, medulla oblongata decide whether to activate the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system. But this one is different. This one is called the right atrial baroreceptor reflex. And this one is totally different because it is monitoring pressure, not in the arteries, but in the right atrium. Hopefully you guys can um, remember that the right atrium is at the end of systemic circulation. So the right atrial baroreceptor reflex works like this. When you're getting a whole bunch of blood flow going back to the right atrium through the superior and inferior vena cavi and the right atrium, it's going to be responding to venous blood pressure, okay? It's not what's going on in the arteries, it's what's going on in the veins. And if you get more blood flow back, you don't need less blood flow out. You're gonna need to increase blood flow. So this one is totally different than this one because the atrium is at the back end of systemic circulation and these are at the front end of systemic circulation. So you're gonna respond differently to the two of them. So the right atrial baroreceptor reflex works like this. It responds to venous blood pressure, so it's much lower pressure, um, not arterial blood pressure. And you've got baroreceptors in the walls of the superior and inferior vena cavi and the right atrium. And they detect venous pressure. An increase in venous return, like when you're working out, will cause stretching. And it sends a signal to the medulla, medullary cardiovascular control centers, to the medulla oblongata. And it tells the medulla oblongata, I've got a whole bunch of blood coming in. And what you don't want to do is slow down the amount of blood that's leaving. What you want to do is more blood in, and I need to increase sympathetic stimulation. So it will increase heart rate, increase strength of contraction, and increase output to keep up with input. It also causes vasoconstriction systemically because otherwise you would drop blood flow that you just increased. Okay, so the right atrial baroreceptor reflex, again, is back end, back end pressure regulation. If the pressure increases in the right atrium, what you need to do is to increase sympathetic stimulation to get it out of the ventricles. So that is the right atrial baroreceptor reflex. Okay, and then the last one, let's just do this really quickly is um, we are also in, we are going to monitor chemoreceptors right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna monitor, monitor the chemical content of the arterial blood in the aortic arch and the carotid sinus, okay? And if I detect certain chemical contents, I'm gonna need to increase blood flow. If I detect a different chemical content, I'm gonna need to decrease blood flow. So I'll show you guys an animation of that one. Okay, chemoreceptor, yep, okay. So here's your chemoreceptor reflex control of blood pressure. Chemoreceptors in the carotid and aortic bodies monitor blood oxygen, carbon dioxide, and pH. Impulses from these chemoreceptors are conducted to the control centers for heart and blood vessels via the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. Again, I don't care if you remember the nerves that are going in for the sensory input. The vagus nerve is important on the way out, though. Chemoreceptors in the medulla oblongata monitor blood carbon dioxide and pH. Decreased blood oxygen, increased carbon dioxide, or decreased pH, decreased parasympathetic stimulation of the heart.
which increases the heart rate. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm saying if I detect any of those in the aortic arch or the carotid sinus, decreased oxygen in arterial blood, de increased carbon dioxide or decreased pH, do I need to increase or decrease my blood flow? Are those good in systemic arterial blood? No, that's not good in systemic arterial blood. So I don't want less blood flow. I want more blood flow, which you can do by um, two things, by parasympathetic, decreasing parasympathetic stimulation and increasing sympathetic stimulation. Decreased blood oxygen, increased carbon dioxide, and decreased pH increase sympathetic stimulation of the heart, which increases heart rate and stroke volume. Okay, question for you. So I just said increase sympath detect any of these, decrease parasympathetic stimulation, increase sympathetic stimulation. What should I do to the vessels systemically? Okay. So I just increased heart rate and stroke volume, right? Okay. What do I want to do to the vessels systemically? What I want to do is constrict. Otherwise, I will just have increased blood pressure. And if I dilate, I will decrease it again. I will have just undid my work. Increased sympathetic stimulation of blood vessels increases vasoconstriction. Okay, so that is the chemoreceptor reflex. Okay.